Hey gang, how you doing? The old sloth hiker here, Fred Donaldson. And uh, I am doing a video today. I got tagged by John Coffey. Uh, and he uh, wanted me to do a short video on some of the new gear that I'm planning on using this year. So uh, he is the Unpaved Explorer. And uh, uh, I encourage you to subscribe to his channel. He talks about lots of stuff, camping, sometimes fishing, sometimes snow blowers. Uh, he has a really interesting channel. And uh, so, uh, John, I appreciate you giving me a tag. And uh, hopefully uh, uh, this will uh, show people some new stuff this year for me. I have a lot of new stuff to share and a lot, I'm trying a lot of new products this year. So uh, hopefully you all enjoy this. So the first one I want to show is I got these uh, Defiant uh, head, uh, uh, um, yeah, not headgear, uh, Defiant uh, headlamps. And uh, I really like these. Uh, they're cheap. I got three of them for about 10 bucks. I think I got them, I believe I got them at uh, Home Depot uh, in one of those aisle things uh, where they have tools for sale and stuff. Uh, the reason why I like them, they have a bright white light, then they have a dimmer one that has two of them. But what I really like about them is that they have a red light, so that what happens is when I'm talking to other people, I can turn this on. I can still see a little bit, but I'm not blinding them. And then it also can have a flashing mode in the red light, so if you really need an emergency, uh, this is a good thing to do. Uh, I really like these. I got three of them, and uh, they've been working great. Uh, they use AAA batteries, and uh, so uh, uh, I've actually used uh, one of them on two different separate weekends, and uh, the batteries lasted all through the, that weekend. So, so I really like that. That's something new. I ha always had headlamps, but I never had some that had some red ones that were cheap, and so uh, I really like that. Another one that I got, as long as we're on lights, I, I picked up some of these. Uh, I can't remember the brand that I got right now, but you can get these. Um, you know, on Amazon or other places, there. Uh, this one runs on I think it's uh, two or three AAA batteries. It has a regular white light, then it has a, a little dimmer white light, and then it has a flasher that you can use, and then that's basically it. So it has three options for you. Um, I really like these as well, uh, just to hang in my tent. This is what I use for lights in my tent or my, underneath my hammock on my ridge line. I hang these and uh, gives you plenty of light. Uh, I usually have one on each end of my ridge line so that I can, you know, have plenty of light if I want it. So those are something new that I've gotten. I haven't been using a lot, so that's another thing that, that uh, I think are really good. You can get usually about three or four of them for about 15 or 20 bucks now. So uh, that's a pretty good deal. One of my other new little gifts that I got is this little guy right here. It's called a, a, a flex tail gear. I got this through Amazon, I think, for like 20, 25 bucks, something like that. And it's an artificial, inf or it's a uh, inflator, and it ha runs on a rechargeable battery. You can hear it. Right now, I have it on inflate, but you can also just flip that around, and uh, then what you can do is you can actually put the top on it and what that does is that sucks in. So that's a really nice uh, little feature of it. So I can pump up my uh, uh, sleeping pad if I need to, but then in the morning I can also suck all the air out of it and that makes it a lot faster. I think normally when I pump up my, when I used to blow up my sleeping bag, or, or not my sleeping bag, my, my pad, uh, used, I have a, an XL from Perea uh, a recharge and uh, so it's a pretty good size bag and it used to take me if I used a little uh, uh, pump thing uh, not you know the the thing where you catch air and then you pump it in it took me about 10 or 12 minutes to pump that thing up if I use my breath and just blew into it which isn't really good because it gets mold and stuff in there eventually um, you know that would take five or six minutes this baby here takes about 30 seconds and it pumps it completely up and it uh, really sucks the air out as well so it helps me to roll it up easier as well so this is really a nice thing I really really like it I'm in a hammock a lot of times so I don't use pads all the time but when I do use a pad this makes it really really nice wow.
recently is I found some gloves they're kind of soft on the back here and then they're covered kind of like with a vinyl on the front and it allows me to grip stuff really really well and, and there and I can do some pretty fine things with my fingers uh, I, my fingers really get cold in the winter but I have a really hard time you know doing anything with with my gloves on and these are the first things that have kind of kept my hands warm and yet, in the same token, uh, they kind of keep them warm. They're not, you know, perfect, but they, and eventually my hands get cold in them. But they help me grip things. And the other thing is, they don't get wet on the side where you're gripping. And so, like, if you're doing stuff with snow or things like that, the water doesn't go through here and they don't get wet. So, uh, uh, you can pick these up. I, I think I got three of them for about ten bucks at uh, uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. They have the same kinds of thing. So, those are, those are pretty nice. While we're on clothing, I have uh, got a couple of other things. I got this hood here. It's like an undergarment. It's like a base layer. And it's, I can't remember exactly, but it's from Duluth. I believe it's called Bear Grease, but I'm not sure. Anyways, what it does is it has, it's an underlayment, but what I, or underlayer, but what I like about it is it has a hood on it. And so this is really nice, especially if you want to sleep at night and when you're in a hammock or like I, use a, a sleep apnea machine so that thing hang over my face well I can actually put this on and my little mask will come down over top of that and it keeps my ears and stuff much warmer and my neck is, stays warm so I don't get drafts and stuff even if it's windy um, the inside has I don't know if you can see it here but it's kind of ribbed or netted and, and it has like little what they call polar guard uh, fibers in it this is again from Duluth and it has these polar guard things, and they're kind of like little hollow things, kind of like the old hollow fill stuff that they used to put in sleeping bags, only they're much, much smaller. Uh, but they, even if you get them a little bit wet, they'll stay warm because they still have dead air space in them. So I really like this. I've used this about four or five times in some pretty cold weather, and it's kept me really, really warm. So that's something new that I got that I really, really like, and I'm looking forward to using them more. Um... I also got a new down puffy, okay? It's got a hood on it. This is the first puffy that I've had with a hood. I had a couple other puppies that I've used over the years. I got a couple from, uh, <laughs> can't remember where it was from now, uh, but I got a couple last year for about 22 bucks each, and they were down jackets, and they were really nice, and they keep me nice and warm, but they didn't have a hood on them. And, boy, sometimes you just need a hood. And so I got this one here. This was from Eddie Bauer. You can read it there. And this is called the Cirrus Light. Now, if you want a full-blown review on it, if you look at Tony Pippin's channel, um, he's got a full review. He and his wife both bought some of these uh, a while ago. I was I just watched the sales, and uh, this thing was uh, normally about 99 bucks, And I watched the sales, and I watched it come down to about 59 bucks or four, it might have been 49 and so I went ahead and snapped it up. And so uh, I really like it. Now, it's rated supposedly for comfort. It's rated for about 40 degrees, where you can just sit in, in 40 degree weather and it's going to keep you warm. But what I like better about it is it's rated that if you're exercising or you're walking or anything, doing much, even just slightly moderate activity, it will keep you warm down to about 10 below. And I've been walking around with it. I've been doing some hiking and stuff. And uh, I've been in some days where it's been like, oh, about zero or five degrees. And it's been really, really cold. But as long as I'm walking and I have like another, you know, long sleeve shirt underneath of it, it's worked really, really well. It's kept me nice and warm, but not overheating me. And so that's been really, really nice too. So uh, those are some things that I've got. Those are all new things that, that I'm basically using this year. Uh, for the first time, and of course, remember I had a, I had to have an open heart surgery last summer, and so um, it really wasn't until like November that I actually got back out in the camping scene, and uh, I think I've hit, I've been out about four or five times now, and uh, so I'm I'm really enjoying some of that new equipment. Another uh, thing that I've had to get, uh, most of you know, I usually use these like hammock gear. Uh, three-sided stakes uh, to pitch my hammock and my and my tarps and my tents and stuff 
and uh, I've used those for you know years and never had one bend on me. And this year I was uh, up at uh, a, a state park <coughs> and it had frozen, the ground had frozen. And I tried to use this, and I don't know if you can kind of see here, it's kind of hard to see, but you can probably see it a little bit, that it, it bent the top of it there a little bit. And I had bent a couple of them, I bent them right over. Uh, the ground was so hard that I couldn't drive a stake in it. Um, I was just shocked. I, I never had that happen before. Now, I had some other little skinny ones, and I tried those, and they worked a little better, but they still, I had some of those bends. So I went to REI, and I basically said, hey, I need some, <laughs> I need some stakes that are going to drive into really hard ground, because I was going to go on a hang, and the trailheads hang down at uh, <clears throat> Dayton with John uh, Ramble and, and the rest of the gang, and it was supposed to be at least zero and maybe even a little bit more. And it had been frozen for about, uh, the ground had been frozen for probably about a week and a half or two weeks. So I was afraid it was really going to be hard. So I went to REI and they got me these just to put this in perspective. Here's the, here's the old ones that I was using. And this one looks wider, but it's a lot, not, not quite as strong. These babies, they're like iron. And then on the end, they have just kind of like a chibble, like a chisel end to them. Okay. I think I can get that better. Yeah. These things work great. I mean, they drive through anything. What was amazing, though, is when I got down to John's, his basically, uh, his setup's up in, out in the woods. And in the woods, where there's leaves and stuff like that, the ground isn't as hard. It's not as it's not as hard. I realized that it, the ground is very, very hard over at uh, uh, the state parks because people are on them all the time. Every week, there people are on that campsite and they're, you know, they're walking on the ground and stepping on the ground and sometimes driving on the ground. And so unless you actually have a, a good leaf litter and stuff underneath of you, you're still going to have some really, really hard ground when it freezes. So so I got these and I uh, didn't actually need them for the hang I did, but next time I go camping up at the uh, state parks or land that's public use, I'm going to uh, bring these to make sure I can uh, drive them in. Now, because I was going to have to worry about driving them in, what I did was I got a new mallet. This was at REI as well. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a lightweight kind of a plastic uh, mallet type thing. But it's really, really sturdy, and it's very, very light. I mean, it's just, just it weighs almost nothing. And I thought, boy, that's kind of nice because sometimes I want to use that on other stuff as well. Uh, maybe to help, you know, do a, a, a knife uh, going through wood uh, when I'm processing some wood or things like that. Instead of using an axe, I can use something like this. So anyways, I got that and uh, it worked great. It drives the stuff really well. And you can actually use these little holes here to kind of uh, help pull your stake out as well. So uh, really, really good investment. And again, like I said, it was like $8 or something. One of the most exciting things I got was this <laughs> right here. This is a Sherpa, and this one is uh, this one I believe is the Sherpa Charlie. I think it is. Uh, anyways, it's a Sherpa 1036. So it's a 10 by 36, 36 inches. Now I have to have a 36 because uh, I'm a pretty heavy guy. I'm I'm right around 300 pounds. So this is enough to keep me. Uh, in snow, above the snow, even when the snow is deep, this is a pretty good thing to keep me uh, up above the snow. Um, normally, you'd have to spend about 300, 350 bucks to get a snowshoe that is big enough or long enough to support me. Uh, this was on sale uh, uh, Amazon for right around 95 bucks or something like that. So I went ahead and got it. it see, it's got a couple um, things for your feet. And they're just pull things. You can lift them up and, and get them over. And then there's a, like a little thing on the back that you can, you know, just get around your heel and stuff. So they go on pretty easy. Notice they have a, they, they, they go up and down like a good snowshoe should. And notice the teeth in them, the cleats. So you can go uphill and you can go downhill without sliding and slipping. And uh, so these are really, really nice. Now, I haven't had a chance to use them. I was hoping we'd get enough snow here this year. Maybe I could use them here. Uh, but uh, I haven't had a chance to use them down here in Ohio. We haven't had enough snow. 
Uh, my mother-in-law up in New York has had lots of snow, but I haven't actually been able to get up there and, and, and uh, uh, even try them out because uh, we haven't been able to get up there when there's been a lot of snow. She's had about two or three feet of snow on the ground. So wishing I was there to try them out, but uh, it's okay. I'm probably not in good shape to use them anyways, but uh, hopefully next year we'll be able to get up and give those a, a real good workout. I uh, have always wanted a snowshoe and basically haven't done it because of the price I saw that price and I thought, man, I got to do it now. If I don't bite the bullet now, I probably will never bite it. So, so uh, really excited about having those. I have several other big <laughs> items that I want to uh, mention just briefly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to narrate these uh, while I put some pictures up uh, from my camping experiences so that you can see them. Uh, I have a new Stove Hut 70 from Pomali. That's the new hot tent uh, that's had all kinds of controversy about leaking and stuff. I've not had problems with it, so uh, uh, I want to talk a little bit about that. I also want to just kind of show off my Timberwolf. Uh, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's the Lone Wolf 902 Signature Series, the 2021 version, but that's my little uh, uh, hot tent stove, and I really love it. It's worked great for me. So I'll give you some pictures of that. Um, we also have a Coleman cot that I got for inside of that. So when I'm camping on campgrounds, uh, just so I can stay up off the ground, uh, I got myself a Coleman cot. I think it was like 50 bucks at, uh, um, I got through uh, uh, Amazon. It's really interesting. I tried to get it through the Coleman site itself, and I couldn't get it there for like three months, but I got it from uh, Amazon in about uh, three days. So uh, it's a little heavy. You, do, you couldn't take it camping in the back country or anything, backpacking with it, but it's really nice. It, uh, you can put it up and really get a nice night's sleep, you know, off the ground uh, on a campsite. So, and then finally, uh, uh, tr I want to kind of show off my trailheads, uh, Ethereal quilt. Uh, John Rammel uh, did that for me. I have one uh, that has a picture of the Lagoon Nebula on it. And so I really, really like that. So I'll try to show that as well. Now, if that doesn't work out, uh, I'll, I'll make another video later and I'll pull those up and, and show them when I'm out in the field sometime. Uh, but I think I got enough pictures and I think I can narrate along uh, with that. So here's a picture of the Pomali Stove Hut 70. Uh, it's a different type of design than what uh, most tents are. It has a little hut on the end of it, kind of like a little shed, which doesn't have a vestibule, or which is a vestibule, but doesn't have a floor, and that's where you put your stove. Both ends have uh, openings on them, so you can go in from either side, which makes it really nice. And then along the side, you can actually have a, uh, there's a mesh screen that you can uh, make a, put kind of in a porch mode, and that makes it really good as well, even for summer. Um, again, I really like it here. It is all set up in the porch mode, and uh, the thing really heats up well in, in the winter. Uh, uh, it heats up very, very quickly. I've run this stove in the rain, and uh, have not had hardly any leakage problems. I know there's a lot of controversy about that, but I haven't had any leakage at all. So really love this stove. I'll probably review it again more later. We also have the Pomali uh, uh, Timberwolf. It's the 902 series. And uh, here's kind of put together. You can uh, pack, pack it in. It folds down really nice, but if you're not doing backpacking you can just leave it set up like that uh, here it is in action you see i got a water percol percolator there for some coffee as well as some water heating here's another one with some water heating you notice they got the glass in the front that's really nice for some ambiance in your tent at night again here's another example of it using again i really really like this stove it puts out a lot of heat there's a spark arrester for the smokestack on top i haven't had any problems with any sparks here it is at one night uh, being used and it worked really great for us. This is my new ethereal quilt. John Rammel from Trailheads uh, made it for me. Uh, and it has a picture of the Lagoon Nebula, which makes this old astronomy pro uh, professor really, really happy. Uh, it is an ethereal uh, quilt. It's uh, packed with 100 uh, FP uh, for the down and it has great loft and it really keeps you warm. Another purchase I made is a 
Coleman hammock, or not a hammock, a, a camp cot. And uh, this is really nice. It keeps uh, me off the floor uh, when I'm actually in my tent. And so it gives me a nice uh, soft light. So I hope you uh, enjoyed my quick little uh, review of what I'm doing new this year. Uh, most of the equipment I showed you, I've used at least once, and I'm really happy with most everything that's been uh, going on with it. And uh, so I'm looking forward to this year and, and, and doing some more serious backpacking. Uh, some of you have been wondering about my recovery. Uh, I'm finally really starting to feel more like myself again. I've lost about uh, 35 pounds, which isn't normal uh, for me. So I, I'm excited about that. I'm aiming to lose you know, another 20 or so. Uh, I'm in cardiac rehab right now, so I go two days a week, and they put an electrocardiogram type thing on me, and they take my blood pressure while I'm exercising and stuff to make sure I'm not overdoing it, but that I am overdoing what I used to do, and uh, so that's been a kind of exciting thing, and I can feel myself starting to get in better shape. I get to start lifting weights and stuff in about two weeks, and that will be helpful for me as well. I really feel like I'm very weak from uh, not doing anything for about six months. And uh, my goal is uh, uh, in the first part of June, the first couple of weeks of June, I'm hoping to go out to the Charles uh, Deem Wilderness out in Indiana and do the Peninsula Trail and uh, stay out there by Monroe Lake uh, for maybe a couple nights. And uh, so if I walk out there with a backpack five, day, or five miles out and five miles back, that would be more than I've hiked in a, probably about uh, six or eight years uh, in terms of actually with a backpack. So... So that's what my aim is, and uh, I'm going to be doing some stuff in between now and then uh, to try to work up to it, and we'll be sharing that when we do it. Thanks for uh, joining our channel. Uh, again, if, you, if this is your first time, you know, click that uh, like button and subscribe. Uh, we'd love to have you. Um, this is uh, I'm, I'm not an expert. I just share what things work with me and uh, uh, you know try to give you some uh, up to date stuff that's going on and sometimes I just share what I do and if you're kind of bored with it I'm sorry uh, I just you know I'm not in this for the money I don't get any money for any of the stuff that I recommend or anything and I'm not really interested in that I just want to share uh, with uh, you know all of you uh, when I find something good I'm going to share it with somebody all right so uh, thanks so much. Uh, and in this channel, we always say, you know, if I can do it, you can do it too. And uh, you'll see you on the trail.